one of the requests I had was to go over the common LSA types used with OSPF. And I commented back, I said, okay, I promise the very next video I publish up on YouTube, I will cover the common LSA types. So here's our beautiful little network right here. And it's got seven routers. I've got router one, router two, router three, and then across the bottom going left to right, four, five, six, and seven. Now, something you need to know about each of these routers is that each router has a loopback interface. Now, loopback interface is assigned an IP address for Canby, and I gave each router an IP address for its loopback that matches the router number. So on R1, it would be 1.1.1.1, on R2 would be 2.2.2.2, .2 .2 .2 .2 and so forth. And I made that a slash 32. So there's no room for extra host addresses on those logical networks, but we really don't need to. It's just a loopback interface. Secondly, I want to point out a couple pieces for this network that are important. We've got each router has an interface that goes off into cyberspace. So on the bottom four, the network goes southbound, and I've got the 172.16.4 network here, the 172.16.5, and then over on the right-hand side, I've got the 192.168.6 matching the router number, and 192.168.7, again, that third octet matching the router number. So the common links going between R1 and R2, I call 10.0.12 between 1 and 2, 10.0.13 between 1 and 3, and 10.0.23 between R2 and R3. See how that works? The third octet gives it away as far as where that network lives in the topology. The green circled area includes all the interfaces that belong to area 0. See, in OSPF, a router doesn't literally belong to an area. You can be in, you're only in my area. Really, it's the interfaces that are participating in areas and the IP addresses on those interfaces. So in this network, R1, all of its interfaces are in area zero and has four. It's got three that we can see, gig one, zero, two, zero, and three, zero. Plus, it's got the loopback interface, which is also participating in OSPF. R2 has four interfaces in OSPF area zero. It's got this guy here, gig one, zero, gig four, zero, gig five, zero. It also has its loopback in area zero. And R3 is treated similarly. If we go down to here to area one, R2 has two interfaces in area one, and it, R4 has three interfaces in area one, one loopback and the two physical, and R5 has three as well. Over on the right-hand side, in red, we have OSPF area two. R6 has two physical interfaces, one loopback interface inside of OSPF, and R7, check this out, it's got its loopback in OSPF, it's got gigabit 2 slash 0 in OSPF area 2, but this interface, gig 1 slash 0, it's in EIGRP. It's not running in OSPF at all. This interface isn't. But what we've done is we've redistributed this routing protocol, EIGRP, the directly connected interface, and anything else that we may have learned through EIGRP, we've redistributed those into OSPF. That's that little cool arrow going into the red zone there. So that's our network to start with, and I've created all of this so I could demonstrate the five most common type of LSAs and what they do for a living. So let's start on R1. On R1, if we want to do a show, this is the fun part, IP route, it's going to show us the entire routing table. And there's a bunch of routes. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So there's a boatload of routes, but they're all right here. And so R1 knows about every single route. Now, they're not OS, all OSPF routes. It knows some of them because it's directly connected. So it's directly connected to the loopback and these three interfaces, but everything else outside of those directly connected networks, those are all OSPF learned. And routers in the backbone, they're lucky. They get to know everything. And let's take a look at how R1 came to know about all of these networks. And that'll discuss, we'll discuss the LSA types as we do it. To see the database, the link state database information, it's show IP OSPF database just like that so there's the command highlighted and we're going to start off by taking a look at lsa type ones so lsa type ones beginning right here are router lsas see a router in ospf is so happy about being a link state router and it's going to advertise about what its directly connected links are so router one is going to tell everybody hey guess what everybody i have four directly connected networks that are running OSPF in this area. I've got the gig 10, 20, 30, and my loopback interface, which are all participating in OSPF. 
to take a quick peek at that, we can do a show IP OSPF interface brief. And sure enough, there's the four interfaces and they're all participating in OSPF. So we look back at the show IP OSPF database. R1, this LSA from R R1 is saying, hey, I've got four links that are connected. And if we wanted to see more details on those, we could do it. We just do a show IP OSPF database and ask for the router LSAs, which is the equivalent to the LSA type ones, and then put in the router ID for the router you want them from. And here's the command, the very top, and it's gonna give us the details on the four networks that router one is connected to. So a router LSA, the LSA type one, isn't just, hey, I'm a router. It's, hey, I'm a router, and here's my current networks that I'm directly connected to. It's like the foundation building blocks for link state routing protocols. So we went through the list. It would have all four interfaces. So we have the loopback interface here. It's calling it a stub network because there's no other OSPF router that he has an adjacency with on that loopback. That makes sense. Then we have the network of 10.0.13.1, this guy right here. And he's saying that the designated router for that segment is dot three. So he didn't win the election. If these were all powered up at the same time, it would be because router three has a higher router ID than router one. And if they both came up at the same time, that would be a logical reason why router three would win it. So that's one of his networks. He's got the 10.0.12.1 network that's here. And he's also saying I'm not the DR for that. So there's two OSPF speakers on the network. I'm not the DR. I'm probably the backup DR, but not the DR itself. And then I've got this network here as well. 10.0.1 goes northbound. It's an active up interface, but it's not considered a quote unquote transit area because there's no other OSPF speaker out there. From an OSPF perspective, it's the end of the world. It's a stub. And so we're not going to be, you know, we are a DR on that segment, but we're not going to see a whole bunch of DR advertisements because there's no one else out there and R1 knows it. So that's the R, the router LSAs, the from R1's perspective. And if we went to any router, let's go to R3, for example, we'd see this exact same information. So R3 to show IP OSPF database router specific, meaning the LSA type ones for 1.1.1.1. It's the same information. It's because everybody's sharing the same link state database. He says, okay, here's everything I know about R1. He's got this stub network for his loopback interface. Yes, we know. He's got a connection to the 13 network, but he's not the DR. R3's, which we're on, R3's snickering saying, it's me. <laughs> I'm the DR. See, I've got a little, it's like a shout out in a, in a, a book. So he gives you a shout out. Hey, and I want to say hello to, anyway. Um, this is also saying that router one has a connection 10.0.12 network using 10.0.12.1. The DR is 10.0.12.2, which is R2. And then last but not least, if we go down a little further, he's also knows about 10.0.1.0. See, the thing is a link state database, everybody's got copies of these. So this is an example of the LSA type ones specifically for R1. And we could look at the ones for R2 and R3 for this area, and they'd be the same. Now, here's a secret about LSA type ones. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's also true for these LSAs. So these LSAs are flooded everywhere in this area, but the LSA type ones are not gonna make it down into OSPF area one or area two. They don't have to worry about or know the details of each of those individual routers that are outside their area. So R4 is not going to ever see the LSAs for R1. It just isn't. We could go take a road trip, say, Dear Mr. R4, show IP OSPF database. Do you know any of the LSA type 1s for R1? He's going to say, nope. <laughs> All I know is R2 because R2 is part of my area, area 1. And I know about R4s, that's me. And I know about R5s, and that's it. So LSA type ones, what happens in the net in the area stays in the area for LSA type ones. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Let's go back up to R1 as a constant frame of reference here for our network. And we'll do a show IP OSPF database. The next type is the network LSAs, an LSA type two. And what that is, that's the designated routers advertising on behalf of a network they're connected to like a broadcast network or a non-broadcast multi-axis network where they happen to be the DR. So from R1's perspective, he's saying, oh, 
there's a link ID of 10.0.12.2. And what that really is, that's the IP address of the interface of the DR on the segment where that DR lives. So 10.0.12.2 is this guy right here. 10.0.12.2 is R2's IP address. The last octet always matches the router number in my topology here. So what this is saying is that R2 for this segment is the DR. And he is going to be sending out the clearinghouse messages, if you will, for that segment. If we looked at the details for that, well, let's do it. Let's look at the details for that LSA type 2 because every router in OSPF area 0 is going to have that information. We'll do a show IP OSPF database and with a question mark. And I want to see network, this guy right there. So I'll put it in network, and then I can also specify this specific one. So the network, if we want to take a look at this one, I'm going to copy and paste it in. I want 10.0.12.2. So the link, I, link state ID for the network LSAs is the interface IP of the DR, which happens to be R2. So I'm going to say that I want to do it based on that. So this is the command I just put in, and this is just showing us the details for the LSA type 2 that's being generated by the DR for that segment. So he says this. Okay, here we go. The link state ID is 10.0.12.2, which means that's the IP address of the DR on that segment. And the advertising router is R2. That's R2's router ID. It's me. It says R2. And then the attached devices to this network segment are these two routers right here. And if there's 15 routers, they would all be in the list. So that's an LSA type 2. It's simply describing a broadcast network where the DR exists, and the link state ID for that is the IP address of the DR on that segment. So that's the LSA type 2. That's the DR clearinghouse for the segment. Okay, so let's move on to LSA type 3. What is that all about? Let's go back to our, our standard basic starting point, and that is the show IP OSPF database command on R1. And I'm going to go up just a little bit. And these summary network link states, those are all representing LSA type 3s. Now, what is that all about? Well, a network summary is only done, well, there's all, there's all kinds of summaries, right? There's like, I'm going to summarize the 172.16 and the 172.17 and the 172.18 into one address. That's a good example of a summary. But as far as LSA types go, whenever you see the word network summary, I want you to think, an ABR did that. An area border router generated that information. What do you mean, Keith? Well, here on this network segment, we've got, on this topology, we have two ABRs. R2, because he's an area border router between the backbone and area 1, he's an ABR. R3 is also an ABR between the backbone and area 2. So who generates these LSA type 3s? It's the ABRs. So here's what R2 does for a living. He says, I'm going to take all the networks because R1 and R6, they don't see the LSA type 1s for these guys. So R2 says, I'm going to take all the information for the networks that I've learned from this area and I'm going to pop them over onto the other area. And they call it a network summary. So if there was 42 networks over here, we would have 42 network summaries that R2 would advertise into the backbone. Not only would we put those 42 networks in the backbone, this router here, R3 would take those 42 networks that he has learned from the backbone plus the backbone routes, which are maybe now a total of 60, and he would create those as, AB, as summary routes, network summaries, LSA type 3s, and put them into area 2. So eventually, every single router is going to know about every single other route in the network. If they're not routes inside of the area they're at, they're routes that they learn through a network summary courtesy of an ABR, an area border router. So let's take a look at them. This is the LSA type 3s right here. We've got these four right here, and these, the link ID is important. It's the network address. So for the LSA type 3s, the link ID or the link state ID equals the network you're trying to reach. I've got 32-bit networks for 4444, for 5555, five, 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 6666 and 7777. So although they look like router IDs here, those are just the 32-bit routes for each of their loopbacks. So R2 saw all those routes, those two routes, and it's the advertising router for 44 and 55, and it sent those into the backbone. So we're looking at R1. 
R1 is saying, hey, I've got routes for 4444 and 5555. Those are LSA type threes because, and only because, the area border router took those routes and advertised them into the backbone. So these four are the loopbacks of the bottom two areas. If we take a look at the additional routes, he, these are the ones that R2 has sent in. R2 knows about the 172, 16, 4, 5, 24, and 25. That's these four networks in blue here. It generated them as LSA type threes and popped them over into the backbone. Also, if we take a look at these routes on the bottom, where'd they come from? All these routes were taken from R3, took these routes, popped them into the backbone, and the this R2 area border router popped those routes into area one. So if we went down to R4, just as a road trip for a moment, and we said, <laughs> that's come in for help, show IP OSPF, OSPF database, it would show us that R4 knows about those networks from the far right, and it knows them as LSA type threes because the routes were here, they got put in the backbone area, and this border router on this side of the network, R2, took all those routes and put them in area one. So everybody knows about all the routes, and that's what a network summary is. In fact, when you see network summary, I want you not to think, I'm summarizing networks, what's that all about? I want you to think, this is an LSA type generated by an area border router to help out the people on the other side of the fence. So he's helping out the backbone by telling about the routes here, and he's helping out area one by telling us about the routes that we've learned via the backbone, which could include other areas that were put into the backbone as well as far as the routes are concerned. And last but not least, let's take a look at LSA type five, and then I'll get to LSA type four. An LSA type five is an LSA type for a, a network that has been injected into OSPF. It wasn't put there with a network statement native to OSPF, but it was redistributed most likely from another routing protocol into OSPF. So let's go take a look at R6. If we go to R6 and we do a show IP OSPF database, it knows about the LSA type ones in its area, <laughs> the LSA type twos from the DRs in its area. It knows about the LSA type threes from the area border router. Thank you very much. And you see from R6's perspective, the only person who's feeding him LSA type threes is R3. So from R6's perspective, everything has been advertised by the area border router, which is, if you look at the topology, that's the only way we're gonna get to all those routes, networks outside of our local area. And then finally down here, we have an LSA type five. Now this LSA type five is an external link state, meaning it's a, it's a route, it's a network, a prefix that we can reach, but it's not native to OSPF. So R7 redistributed that route into OSPF and the link ID, this is important, the link ID, just like in a network summary, the link ID is the actual network that you're trying to reach. So if this is the 192.168.7 network, the link ID is gonna show up as 192.168.7. Ta -da! That's the link ID. Now, how do we get there? R6 says, what if I need to find out how to get to that network? Well, obviously, if you look at the topology, the only way we're going to get to this network segment is through R7. So inside this area, it says, oh, the advertising router is 7777. And R6 says, oh, that's not a problem because if we scroll up a little bit. I happen to know all the details about 777, what interfaces it's connected to, what networks it's connected to, and I can get there no problem because I know 777. He's the default gateway or the, the path, if you will, to this external route, and that's the LSA Type 5. So inside the area here, there is no LSA Type 4. We have LSA Type 1, each of the routers, LSA Type 2, the designated routers, LSA Type 3s generated by the area border router, and we have the LSA Type 5 referring to an external route through a router that's in our area. So what is the deal with 4? By the way, R7 would be called an autonomous system boundary router because it's linking together OSPF and some non-OSPF domains, such as RIP or EIGRP or ISIS or something else. So what is the deal with this link, st the LSA type 4? Why do we need it? Well, here's the rub. Let's go back to R1. Good old Mr. R1. If we look at the bottom, 
we have this information that says, hey, guess what? If you want to get to 192.168.7, the advertising router is 7777. Now, the LSA type 1s for 7777 for this router never make it out of the area. <laughs> so R1 has no clue on anything about 7777, that router. It doesn't know what networks it's connected to or how to reach it. And so the area border router, R3 in this case, it also adds itself, if you will, as the advertising router, and it's an LSA Type 4. So an LSA Type 4 is the router ID of the ASBR, the Autonomous System Boundary Router. And for the benefit of R1 and R2 and everybody else, whoever might need to reach that network, this basically says, hey, to get to 77, to find out information on how to get to 7777, this LSA Type 4 is the information on how to reach it, which basically says, Dear Mr. R1 or whoever else is looking at this, to get to, to get to the external network, the router ID is 7777. But because you poor souls don't know anything about that router ID and it's directly connected networks, the advertising router is 3333 and check it out. That router ID is in this area and these devices know how to get there. So it's like connecting the dots together. If we go up a little bit, you'll notice we have an LSA Type 1 for 3333, which includes all the links that R3 is participating in so that R1 can forward. So that's it. That's a, <laughs> That took a little longer than I thought it was going to, but that's the five common types of LSAs. I'd like to review them with you. An LSA Type 1 is just about the router itself and its directly connected networks. Everybody in Area 0 is going to have all the same information. They'll all know about all the interfaces and all the routers that are participating in OSPF Area 0. The people who get to be designated routers on a segment where there's more than one OSPF speaker are going to generate LSA Type 2s. The ID for that is going to be the interface IP address of the DR for the segment is the DR4. So that's the LSA Type 2s. It describes everybody who's connected to that segment. It's a wonderful thing. An LSA Type 3 is only generated by an area border router. So the routes from Area 1, the only way they get put into the backbone is as LSA Type 3's network summaries. They're just, the reason they call it a summary is that we're sending the network routing information, but we're not giving the details behind the scenes on the individual routers and their link states. So I guess in that sense, it really is kind of an overview saying, hey, guess what world? You want to reach these networks? Go ahead and come through me, says Mr. R2. And because that's the advertising router. An external LSA Type 5 is generated by a router that doesn't, that has routes that are not native to OSPF. So EAGRP, redistributed in, that LSA Type 5 goes throughout the entire network. Everybody sees it, life is good. The problem is only these guys know about Router 7. So in addition, the ABR is going to add the ASBR, the LSA Type 4, which is, gives the rest of the world a way to reach the actual ASBR. I've enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun. I appreciate you pay, paying, uh, paying attention. And if there's other requests, let me know. I'll be happy to do them. And I wish you the best of success with OSPF or wherever your routing takes you. Thanks, everybody.